Hi, I'm Lola. What do I say? How do I want? How do you want me to? However you want to do it. Okay. Hi. <laughs> uh, ah! Hi, I'm Lola Kirk, and um, where are you from? I'm from <laughs> I'm from um, New York, but I live in Los Angeles, and I'm also sort of from London. But at this point, it just feels irrelevant to to say that. But I did anyway. When did you start making music? I started making music when I was. Well, oh, th this is something I haven't remembered in a long time, but, um, there, you know, there's like yak packs that you, you would in the, in the early nineties, there were these like keychains that you could like talk into and then it would like play yourself back for you. It was amazing. It was an amazing thing. And I think I wrote my first song on a yak pack when I was like five years old, but then I took a long break and started making music again when I was like 18 with a ukulele. And who did you listen to growing up? Um, I listened to, to all sorts of different music growing up, but the music that... Um, I, I, I've always been like a dad rock fan. Like, I started listening... I remember like waking up as if from a dream in the backseat of the car when I was a kid to the guitar solo in Since I've Been Loving You, that Led Zeppelin song, and being like, what is this, guys? And then they told me what it was, and... And that was kind of the beginning of my introduction into into rock and roll in that way. Um, but the music that inspires me the most now, I guess, would be like um, if you could take Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, and then draw like a family tree that goes down, and it would be like Gene Clark, Graham Parsons, um, and then all of their solo bands, and then just like the the people that it. Um, it will, it would peter out into all these other bands and that would be the kind of core of my musical taste. So how did you get started? Um, what do you, in what way? In actually doing music. In actually doing music. Well, I had an all girl country band in college and, um, um, when you say country band really fast, it kind of sounds like contraband, which makes me realize that that would have been a really cool band name, like contraband. You guys can't steal that from me. <laughs> Country band. Okay, anyway. Um, and that was like the first time that I started playing music um, publicly. And then that petered out and I was just writing songs alone. And I, I would always like bring my guitar with me when I would go um, and shoot movies because being on location can be incredibly lonely. And you're not like, like when you're a band and you tour, you're you're with your friends and you're going to a new place every single night and when you're an actor oftentimes like you're completely alone and they just like plop you out into the middle of nowhere because they have really good tax incentives there and um my guitar it sounds so corny but like kept me company and i i found that songs actually also kept me company too and and it's funny like now when i'm stuck writing a song i realize that um the song the song will just stay with me until I like it until it needs to like it can be a great friend um and something to return to every single night um and so, and then my partner and um the producer of both my record and my my EP Wyndham um Wyndham Garnett was like you should make a record and I was like okay cool and then we made a record and it was really fun so so that's a really long-winded answer to your question when do you feel you got your first break? Like now. <laughs> My first break as a musician, um, you know, it's, it, it feels honestly this moment that I'm in right now where people are actually like kind of paying attention to my music for the first time and, and paying attention to my music as a separate thing from um, like certain characters that I've played that, cause I'm an actress as well. And, and a lot of, a lot of times like I would play shows and I was playing shows like in the middle of nowhere um for very few people and people that would come would be like fans of a character they like wanted me to be like a an oboist because i played an oboist on tv for a while and so it was like exciting that people would show up in that way but also it was like um you know it's like that's not what i <laughs> that's not why i'm here but now i feel like people are beginning to pay attention to the music and and it, it feels, I mean, it's, it's a really strange feeling. It's like really affirming in a way that I never expected to be affirmed. 
So your debut album is about to come out. Mm -hmm. Tell me a bit about how it came about. Um, well, it was, I mean, it just feels kind of like a, a, a dream and that's so like cheesy to say or whatever, but like I, it, it came about like pretty organically. I, I had made this EP um, and then I was touring the EP for a while with a bunch of musicians who um, were just so supportive of me and really liked the music. And then they were like, um, you know, you should make a record. And, and like, when enough people say that to you, then those those things that always feel like they might be far off or out of reach um, begin to seem like a possibility. And so we, I got together with this group of musicians that I've been playing with for a while, and we went into this studio in Boyle Heights, and um, we just like recorded everything live to tape, and. Um, it just felt like that was really making music. Um, but all of the songs were really written in 2017 and they are about a range of things. Um, so there's not like one specific through line, uh, except just like things I think about obsessively. What is the meaning of the name Heart Head West? Um, it's, it's one of the, it's a line or it's like a version of, of, a line from the song Out Yonder. Um, and I guess if there was a, to be a through line on this record, it, it might just be about uh, longing, essentially. Um, and Hearthead West, to me, um, when I wrote it, it was a line about a longing, and a, a, specifically a longing to be where you aren't, um, but because you imagine that when you go somewhere else, you'll be more free. And the West, like, I don't know, it's such a... Um, it's like such a symbol of, of freedom, both personal and like political. Uh, so, so yeah, that's what it's about. And I like my heart and I like my head. <laughs> I like other people's hearts and heads too. <laughs> what are some things that are important to you that you like to address through your music? Um, well, I think like longing, uh, but specifically longing about like, you know, not, not just longing for other people, but like longing for things that you want for yourself. Like I know that a, a lot of my, uh, my work is, is kind of born of low self-esteem and I don't really know that I would, um, have much to make if I wasn't constantly trying to resolve something or affirm something for myself. So, um, you know, I, I hope that, um, other people can feel seen in their own struggles with, with self-love, uh, through my music. And, and I, I, I think that music is capable of doing that because there are many artists who have made me feel like the deepest, darkest reaches of my soul, um, you know, aren't, are in good company, essentially. So as a means of expression, how does that compare or contrast to your work as an actor? Well, I think as an actor, like, I'm... I'm I, I have so many uh, questions about what acting really is, but I think that as an actor, like, I am, I am using myself to become uh, or express a different person. And, like, at best if I do my job, my, my, my best, then, then people will believe that I am another person. And I think as a musician, like, um, I am using myself and to, to become the greatest version of myself. And so I think that that there, I'm just coming into an awareness about that distinction that one is about like transforming into other people. And one is about transforming into like me. Who would you most like to collaborate with and why? Can they be dead? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think me and Jerry Garcia could have a couple hits, you know, little, some dance songs. Um, no, I, I, um, there are so many people that I would love to collaborate with and I feel like living in East LA, which sounds like the, the beginning of a joke or something, but... I, I feel like I'm just around so many people that I already am 
really grateful to get to collaborate with. Um, my friends are all like incredible musicians, um, from my friend Cornelia Murr to um, Lila Larson, who I was just playing with, who's in Sons and Illustrious Father, and this band Amo Amo, and I mean, the list just goes on, but th those are people I already feel grateful to collaborate with. And then it'd be cool if like Emmy Lou Harris wanted to sing with me or someone like that. What are your interests and passions outside of music? Um, my interests and passions outside of music, um, people, <laughs> um, I, I, I feel very passionate about lots of things. I mean, I'm very passionate about acting, um, reprodu reproductive rights, <laughs> um, changing the world, being, being like a source of love and light in the world and, uh, seeking out others who want to do the same. Yeah. Happiness. Can you be passionate about happiness? Of course. I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's your favorite book, film, and music right now? <gasps> okay, my favorite book, like, that just, I'm trying to think. I just got turned on to uh, this Fleetwood Mac record I'd never heard before called Future Games, um, which is really incredible. It's pre-Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham. Um, but I like that a lot. My favorite book right now, this might take me one second. Um, I, I'm reading uh, Dream of Passion by Lee Strasberg right now. I think that there's a lot of, um, like, how do I say this? I think that a lot of people think of acting as just like this thing that people do and, and not as an art form. And so it's been really exciting for me to read about people who are not taking a passive approach towards acting, um, and, and just, ha like, develop even more respect for this thing that I, I already love so much. And my favorite film right now, I just rewatched Three Women, the Robert Altman movie. Um, that was like, I think I said that that was my favorite film when I was a teenager because I wanted to sound cool. Um, and I'm, I'm sure I did sound very cool, but then I rewatched it like a couple weeks ago and I was like, oh, I didn't get that movie at all. Um, and Sh Shelley Duvall and Sissy Spacek and Janice Rule, all of those performances in that movie are incredible. And I love Robert Altman's filmmaking. So those are, those are on my mind right now. What's next? What's next? Well, um, we got a bunch of shows coming up and hopefully we'll have more coming up and, um more movies coming out, though I don't know when. So, a lot, but I don't know. <laughs>